Vandal Hearts. Hey everybody, welcome back for another game break. So Vandal Hearts is the game we're talking about today. And Vandal Hearts was a tactical role-playing game made in 1996 by Konami, a once great maker of video games, obviously. And Vandal Hearts was known for its large-scale battles, especially when you compare it to the likes of Final Fantasy Tactics, where you had a party of, I believe, oof, off the top of my head, maybe five or six characters. Vandal Hearts, you could have up to 12. And even Tactics Over, you could only have up to 10. So the battles could get quite large. They were always epic. They were very entertaining. The graphics for its time were quite good, especially when it comes to spell effects. And the sprite work still holds up incredibly well today. And it had a mature art style, a slightly more mature art style with a slightly more mature story that left a lasting impact on me as a kid, especially since I was so young. I wasn't used to consuming more mature stories like this game had when I was a kid. But for all its positive, Vandal Hearts is also known to have some flaws, and rightfully so. Vandal Hearts was unbalanced if you had a couple of enchanters, let alone the Vandalier class, you would totally break the game. It was extremely linear in design, and it had a ton of missable items all over the place. But I think Vandal Hearts is one of those cases where the game is greater than the sum of its parts. Yes, it has flaws, but everything that works well, works very well. And I think everything comes together and it coalesces in such a way that the experience is one every fan of the tactical role-playing game genre should experience at least once. So let's get into it. Let's talk about Vandal Hearts and by and large, what makes it so great. And before I proceed any further with this review, there will be spoilers throughout, so this is your warning to turn back now. Now for how Vandal Hearts looked. By and large, I still like most of what I saw replaying Vandal Hearts all these years later. And at the time of its release, the 3D environments, the backgrounds were quite well done. Yes, they look dated today, but I think they still hold up decently well, and they very much suit the sprites that are on screen, whether they're enemies or your own characters. They, they both complement each other very well. And the environments, I feel like they were constructed in such a way that it made for some interesting levels and for some epic battles. Don't get me wrong, there's a couple of levels here that I could just, honestly, to make me so mad, I could punch a hole in the wall. I'll get to those specific ones later. I feel like you know which ones I'm talking about if you've played this game before. But by and large, I like the environments. And, okay, enough about the environments, the visuals. The Fountains of Blood. I can't be the only person out there who, when I think of Vandal Hearts, one of the first things that comes to mind is the Fountains of Blood that happen when you kill a character. That first unlucky bandit that Ash kills in the very first level, and that obviously we have this Fountain of Blood popping out. I was floored by that. I'd never seen anything like that in a role-playing game before, let alone a tactical role-playing game before, and it is very much part of Vandal Hearts' identity. Loved that. And then the other thing too is with character portraits, when one of your own characters or an enemy boss, for example, is killed or wounded, the character portraits reflect that. You can see blood on their faces or dribbling off their lips, or their helmets will be cracked or they'll be missing an eye. And that just adds to the already gritty feeling this game had in its own sprite design. And then it's reflected in the character art, just wicked cool. And then this kind of gritty nature, not only do we have it with character portraits and the blood, even the attack animations have some unique things that I haven't really seen in a lot of tactical role-playing games. For example, Hassan, that one boss that Grog really has a grudge against for obvious reasons. He'll just spit on the ground before he swings his big axe thing. <laughs> where you'll have insane soldiers just licking their blades before they try and slash you, where you'll have ghouls spitting bile at you from across the stage. Just loved it. These type of attack animations, they work so well. They fit in so well with the game's mood too, that it just made Vandal Hearts a very unique experience. And something else about this game that's very unique, and I was trying to put my finger on it, and I was finally able to was, for example, 
Tactics Ogre and Final Fantasy Tactics weapons. You don't see the sprites' weapons until they initiate an attack. Whereas Vandal Hearts, everyone's weapon is catered to their class. As you change class, you, your weapon automatically changes in appearance as well, and they always fit the sprite perfectly. Perfect example of this, Dolan in his Dragoon form looks absolutely amazing and he gets this sweet, huge golden axe to go with it. And I could just watch Dolan wreck fools with that thing all day. And the fact that the character's weapons complement their sprites so well just gives Venal Hearts a unique visual flair when it comes to tactical role-playing games. Yes, I'm sure other games have done it, but very much Venal Hearts, I feel like they did a particularly good job with it. And there were a bunch of other little visual flares that I appreciated about Vandal Hearts as well this time around. I love the fact their character portraits change with the classes when they upgrade. I always think that's a great little touch. And even the chapter transition, I don't know what it is about it, but I just always found it really cool. I love the music that goes with it. And it was always a good way to start a new beat to the story. And I always felt like I was in for something epic because of it. And because of that, I think they did a pretty damn good job with it. And something else I really liked about Vandal Hearts, and I'm sure a lot of you will agree with me if you played this game, is there was variety to the mission structure. It wasn't simply kill everything on screen for every map. There were a lot of maps where you would have to escape from prison, you'd have to maybe ambush enemies, escape off an exploding bridge while fighting at the same time. There was a lot of variety to the maps, or maybe even saving a party member. And I really enjoyed that about Vandal Hearts. It, it made a lot of the levels feel very unique, and you weren't just simply doing the same thing over and over again of destroying every enemy on screen, which is fine, it's still very fun. But I just like that about Vandal Hearts. And while it does get some criticism, I'm sure, for being a lot simpler of a game, especially when it comes to class structure or job structure compared to maybe the likes of Final Fantasy Tactics and Tactics Ogre, I think what it does, it does very well. But while Vandal Hearts does have some unique missions in terms of objectives, it is still a very linear experience. You're very much on a set path, but I found it okay for what Vandal Hearts was trying to be and for what it was trying to do. The fact that it was so linear, I, I like to say it was more focused. It was focused on telling a cohesive, well-paced story with some epic battles to experience while doing so. So on that level, I feel like Vandal Hearts worked. I really appreciate it. And there were a lot of other things about the game that did work. For example, there's counter hits in this game, and I love that about Vandal Hearts and Tactics Ogre. As soon as your enemy gets hit with a melee, a melee attack, they automatically counter attack. And I like that level of strategy, always knowing my units can counter hit and they can be countered as well. I've always just liked that dynamic. It always makes the battle feel more free flowing and it, there's more going on at once and I'm more engaged in what's happening instead of just chop, move to the next person, chop, move to the next person. I like hit and being hit back. So that was a really good touch. And as I've said before, the battles are very large scale with having 12 members in your party at once and using every single character you recruit. I love that about Vandal Hearts. You use every single character you recruit in the story. No one's left behind. You don't have to kind of hum and haw about which person you want to bring with you. And that makes it more engaging with these characters, the fact you use every single character in every battle. Yes, they're not the most well-developed characters in the whole world, but I do like the fact we get to bring everyone with us into the fight. And even though it probably could be argued the fact we have so many characters makes the game really easy, and this game can be a bit on the easy side, absolutely. And it gets broken as hell. If you have a couple of enchanters, a couple of mages, or if you get the Vandalier class. The game gets absolutely broken, but I'm okay with that. I still found the game very fun. It didn't take away from the epicness of the fights because I was still very much engaged in the story as well. And the Vandalier class, you don't have to use it if you don't want to. The Vandalier class is a very fitting reward in this game. You have to go through some grueling maps, find some incredibly obscure missing items, and they make you work for the Vandalier class reward. And it is a fitting reward for what you're put through because two of the maps, particularly when you're going through the Vandalier subquest, are grueling affairs. The one you have to kick a box all around the map, three boxes, it's super tedious, it takes forever. And then the one after that, you have to climb essentially a pyramid and you can't skip 
enemy turns or whatever like you can in a lot of the modern tactical role-playing games. It takes at least an hour to just climb this goddamn pyramid to uh, finish the level. So there are some grueling parts to getting the Vandalier class, but the reward is absolutely worth it. It's super overpowered and it's great. The work you go through to get it, it's absolutely worth the reward. So even though the game is broken, I don't mind. I like the fact that the Vandalier class is essentially Sid Orlando from Final Fantasy Tactics, but on steroids. So while this game very much follows the structure of fight, cutscene, visit town, and then repeat all three I just mentioned, I was okay with that because I was thoroughly engaged in what was happening. I was enjoying the battles I was fighting in, and they made it a good ride to be on. And I didn't need, I could have maybe used a few more optional battles, but I felt very content for what the game gave us. And something else I was fairly content with was the soundtrack. Not a lot of it blew me away. Like it, it very much served its purpose, wasn't great, wasn't terrible. A lot of the town themes were quite nice, but the one piece I really liked, and this piece I feel really helped solidify Ben Hearts' identity, was the intro and outro song. And this was performed by Jadlanka Stojakovic, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And she was a Bosnian singer. And I'm not used to hearing a lot of Bosnian music in my JRPGs or in games in general. And she did a very good job. So let's have a quick listen. <laughs> Honestly, I, I still get goosebumps from this song, and even though this songstress died several years ago, I just want to say you did an amazing job and you helped form this game's identity and you helped make it a great experience for everybody. So thank you. Now for Vandal Hearts' story and setting. By and large, I enjoyed both of them immensely going through the game again. And I enjoyed it immensely as a kid. And you know me, I love political intrigue and this game sets that up. We have the DSF, the Domestic Security Forces and the Crimson Guard having a bit of a rivalry that threatens to spill out into greater conflict. And then we have a couple of great mysteries as well to whet our appetites with. We have the disappearance of Eris the Sage, the founder of the country 15 years ago. And then we have a mysterious stone that soldiers are looking for and it causes some kind of accident that we need to go investigate. Venom Hearts did a great job, in my opinion, of putting its hooks into you. I was super curious right away with what was going on. I wanted to unravel all these mysteries. I was very curious what was going to happen in terms of the domestic and political situation. They did a great job setting up Venom Hearts' setting. And Venom Hearts' story, while I'm sure people would have complaints about it today, and I'm sure they had complaints about it back in the day when the game was released, they'd probably find it too short, too linear by design as well. But by and large, there were a lot of things I liked about the story. Yes, there were problems such as Kira's betrayal, for example. That was a really heavily telegraphed. Saw that shit coming from a mile away. But there were other genuine surprises which I really enjoyed, like the three-year time skip. Didn't see that coming at all. And then for all intents and purposes, the Crimson Guard wins, and then you have to overthrow them, and all your bros are in jail, and you have to save them. Loved that. I was thoroughly invested in that. And I liked Ash's story quite a bit as well. I liked him as a main character. I liked the fact that he was the supposed son of a traitor. He's been looked down upon his whole life and ridiculed. People very much blaming the son for the supposed sins of the father. I've never understood that shit. I was very sympathetic towards Ash the whole game. And then when we find out his dad actually wasn't a traitor and was trying to save Eris the Sage from a greater conspiracy, oh, I just... Thought that revelation was fantastic. And then we actually get that flashback where we see this scene and then it fades to black and you can hear Ash's father fighting with Clive and a couple of other army members. And you hear the swords clang and you hear that scream.
That blood curdling scream or that that cry of anguish he lets out still gets me. That that scene was imprinted onto my brain. I was a, that was a holy shit moment for me when I was a kid. And very much it always gets me when I see it. So they they did a couple of legitimately good things with this game's story. And it was entertaining, and that's all I need generally. I need an entertaining story, and I was entertained throughout Ben Hearts' adventure. Plus, we get a happy ending to the game, which is something I never expect, especially if games have kind of a darker setting and a darker tone. I usually expect shit to go sideways at one point or another. And while stuff does, we get a happy ending. Every character essentially gets to ride off into the sunset, Ash included, even though he gets more of a wink-wink ending. And I really enjoyed that, and I love having that type of payoff. Yes, not every game has to have an happy ending or a movie or whatever, but it's something I really enjoy, so it's definitely in this game's plus column. So that's what I have to say about Vandal Hearts. And while I'm fairly confident today it'd be picked apart for being unbalanced, too linear, not overly diverse in terms of gameplay mechanics, it's still a game I really enjoy. I think it's an absolutely solid game, better than the sum of its parts, and it is one I would absolutely recommend to any fan of the tactical role-playing game genre. I, I feel it is must-read material for the TRPG genre of games. I absolutely believe that. So thank you for joining me as always for this tribute review. I wasn't planning on this being a tribute review, but it very much turned into one. And as always, if you have any comments about the game, if you have any good memories about the game or bad memories about the game, definitely let me know in the comments and I would absolutely love to talk to you about Vandal Hearts. Amazing experience. And as always, thanks for joining me and watching this video. I'll see you next time.